LeeTDickey.com. Do you have an event or occasion coming up that could use a special touch? Perhaps a wedding, a production, a show? Good! Then you're in luck. Haley Moores is who you're looking for. Haley is a makeup artist in the Toronto, Ontario area, specializing in bridal, glam, natural, and special effects. She's incredibly talented, professional, easy to work with, and has a personality that is second to none. To book Haley Moores today, Follow her on Instagram at mad underscore malash, that's M-A-D underscore M-I-L-A-S-H, or email her at madmalash, again, that's M-A-D-M-I-L-A-S-H, at gmail.com. Book Haley Moore's today, you'll be glad you did. LeeTDickey.com LeeTDickey.com Do you find yourself reminiscing on what life was like when you were younger? Do your favorite songs, movies, and TV shows instantly take you back to a simpler time? Great, then you're in the right place. Join me, Lee Dickey, on my new web series and podcast, Yo Nostalgia, where I cover everything you grew up with. From films and toys to fads and trends, Yo Nostalgia has it all. Subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever podcasts are available. Follow along on social media at Yo Nostalgia Show to keep up on this time traveling trip. Yo Nostalgia, breathing new life into your memories, available everywhere now. LeeTDickey.com. LeeTDickey.com. Do you enjoy good conversation? Are you a person with many passions? Perfect. Then the Beats and Speaks podcast is for you. Join me, Lee Dickey, every Friday for stories and interviews about everyday life with everyday people about everyday things. Everyone has a story, and I just want to help them tell it. The Beats and Speaks podcast, your everyday life, everyday stories, everyday people, comedy and entertainment audio joyride. Subscribe and download on LeeTDickey.com, Lee Dickey TV on YouTube, and your favorite podcast app. The Beats and Speaks podcast, available everywhere now. LeeTDickey.com LeeTDickey.com What's going on everybody? Lee Dickey here. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Beats and Speaks podcast. Today, this week, I want to give you my first impressions of the Supermarket Sweep reboot, hosted and produced by Leslie Jones, currently airing on ABC. But before we get into that, I want to tell you where you can find the Beats and Speaks podcast. Of course, brand new episodes of the Beats and Speaks podcast are released every single Friday on my official website, LeeTDickey.com, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and wherever podcasts are available. Please do comment, like, share, and subscribe. Rate us five stars and leave us reviews too, if you would, please. And thank you. We're on YouTube as well, under Lee Dickey TV. Of course, all the links will be listed in the description and show notes down Below, if you want to get in touch with me or the show, follow along on social media at Lee T. Dickey. That's on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Lee T. Dickey. Or send emails to Lee T. Dickey at gmail.com. All right, now that all the housekeeping is out of the way, let's get into the main event, get into why you are really here. This week's episode of the Beats and Speaks podcast, my first impressions of the Supermarket Sweep reboot Hosted and produced by Leslie Jones, currently airing on ABC, right here, right now, on the Beats and Speaks podcast. All right, so first impressions of the Supermarket Sweep reboot, currently airing on ABC in the U.S. and CTV here in Canada, hosted and produced by Leslie Jones. I, you know what, I don't mind this version of the show. It's a lot like any of the other game show reboots that you have these days. Match Game, Celebrity Family Feud, uh, The $100,000 Pyramid, Card Sharks, Pressure Luck. They're two half-an-hour programs edited edited together to fit a one-hour block of programming time. Now, you're not going to get that with certain syndicated television shows, because I know Family Feud itself, I know I I mentioned Celebrity Family Feud 
just a few seconds ago and how it's too it's like you know supermarket sweep card sharks uh, match game pressure luck the reboots of them now where they're two 30 minute programs edited together to fill a one hour time slot with the syndicated version of something like family feud or with jeopardy or you know uh wheel of fortune you're gonna fade to black after that first half an hour and then come up on another episode of the same show depending on what you know your affiliate has programmed when it comes to say family feud they have two episodes airing for an example cbs in detroit i do get that feed so they have two episodes of the syndicated version of family feud filling a one hour time slot but they're both half an hour of programming you fade to black on that first half an hour and then you have that small commercial break and then you come up on the next half an hour programming another episode of family feud with celebrity family feud supermarket sweep pressure luck match game card sharks all the reboots there and one hundred thousand dollar pyramid they're two 30 minute programs edited together to fill one hour of programming now specifically with supermarket sweep because that's what we're talking about today I don't have I don't have a problem with it. You know, it's there's enough neon in there to make the 80s jealous. To be fair, like I swear to God, you know, all the Rubik's cubes and f- big baggy like parachute pants type, just these bright colors. There is it's neon on steroids. It's neon to the nth degree. There, like the 80s is like, man, we should have gotten in on this. And it's true. There's like it's so bright, it's so colorful. Leslie Jones, again, as colorful as the show's like graphic package itself. It's just she's got you know, um, t a graphic t on usually of the two episodes that I've seen and the two episodes that have aired. But by the time you guys hear this, I think a third episode will have aired. It's graphic t, and then you have a very colorful suit, which. I think is a really cool sort of nod because the host of the American version of Supermarket Sweep back in the 90s and early 2000s, David Ruprecht, was known for like these very, I don't want to call them ugly, but it's like these very loud almost tennis sweaters and these very loud sort of shirts. Very cool. You know, I mean, granted... If I could go through David Ruprecht's closet, especially during the time that he was hosting Supermarket Sweep, I would love that, okay? I know that Canada, we had a version of it here hosted by Tino Monte with... With Dave King as the announcer. I know that Australia had a version hosted by Ian Turpin who also hosted The Price is Right out there. And I know that for my money, of the episodes that I've seen, thanks to the internet and thanks to the advent of YouTube and all the streaming services and such, like Netflix and what have you, for my money, I'm not taking anything anything away from Tino Monte or anything, but I really enjoyed Dale Winton's run as host. He hosted two different versions of, or two different series of, uh, supermarket sweep in the UK. I think one in 2007 and the original run from 1993 to 2000 or 2001, something like that. It for me, like Dale Winton is the guy. He's the quintessential like game show. He's the when I think of supermarket sweep. As much as I love David Ruprecht, Tino Monte, I've never really seen it of a full episode of. Supermarket Sweep Australia, although I'd love to see one. Um, Dale Winton, for me, is the guy. That's he's that's him, right? He just had the personality and could get on so well with the contestants. It just fit so well. I know that Ryland Clark hosted the most recent version of Supermarket Sweep UK. I think they aired a couple series, and I'm not sure what's going on with the third, if there will even be a third series of Supermarket Sweep UK the current in these current times. But uh, getting back to 
the reboot at ABC, hosted by Leslie Jones. Again, she's got like a graphic tee and a full-on, very loud, colorful suit, which is cool. I think, and I can't believe I'm saying, the jackpot is huge. Like when they get to the big sweep, they have the option to go for up to one hundred thousand dollars, right? If you the if you get the first, if you solve the first set of clues. Then you win 25, and then they give you the option to double or nothing. If you get the next clue, it's 50, and then, you know, option double or nothing. If you solve that last clue, it's like $100,000. What they do is they will give you your grocery total from the front game. So, say you end up with 3500 or $4,000 in the front game in terms of all your mini sweeps and the games that they play before they get to the big sweep, they'll give you the the team. They'll split, say, like the 4000 or five, you know, the, the 4000 or whatever money they accumulated in the front game, anywhere from like, say, 2500 to like $4,500 or something like that. They can split that. That's theirs no matter what. When it comes to like the front game itself... The only thing I'm missing is you like the use of the buzzers in the mini sweep. Uh, they, you know, whereas they had that in the David Ruprecht version, in the Leslie Jones version of the show, the current version, they, you know, she reads the clue and then says first person to get it instead of like ringing in, you know. I guess they leave that up to whoever. They leave that up to everybody, whereas everybody has a, a chance to play. Fine. Great. That's up to them. That's their call. I think it's something like, in the current version, first person to get me this product, get their hands on this product, wins an extra 10 seconds on their big sweep time, and then it's an additional like $250 added to their final shopping total before they even get to the big sweep. So the big money stuff is there. Like the their base time has increased 30 seconds, um, as opposed to it was I think a minute 30 in the David Ruprecht version. In the Leslie Jones version here, it's two minutes, and then you know you're running through a lot of the similar a lot of similar games like Scrambled Letters is, is still there. Um, they have one where they combine the names of two brands, say like. Pam and Skippy, and then they say, here are the two logos that sort of sandwich together, unscramble those, or try to decipher those, and then give me the names of two products. So, if something says pants, then it's, you know, Pam cooking spray and Skippy peanut butter. Something like that, right? Or, not uh, Skippy peanut butter, but it's... um. Pam Cooking Spray and Hunt's Ketchup. It's, I'm pretty sure Hunt's is an American brand because we have Heinz here in Canada. But, you know, you get the idea. And then there's, because they've tried to modernize the game and bring it up to, say, 2020 standards and where we are, there's also another one where, tell me what product is being sent to me. Tell me what product this person on the other end of my text message sent me, but they're only using emojis, can you decipher the emojis? That's cool. I like that. And a lot of the same similar games is there, are there. The Round Robin is still there. And I like Leslie Jones's host. She's got this sort of a really, really big personality. And she has said on several occasions that, you know, Supermarket Sweep was her show. Now, Grant, I've seen most of each of the iterations of Supermarket Sweep. David Ruprecht, the Canadian version with Tino Monte, because I am from Canada, and that's the version we got here, even though I think the Canadian version lasted three, two or three years. It aired between, like, uh, sorry, more like two seasons or something like that, because it aired between... Uh, 93 and 1995. I think it was taped at... I'm not sure. It might have been the CHCH Studios. I can't be uh, all too sure on that, but I I know I read something somewhere. I think it was on the back of the, the credit roll of one of the Canadian tapes where 
they were taped in Hamilton, Ontario, which is about an hour from where I live if you're driving. And, you know, that's cool. I, I know that uh, ITV was uh, responsible and they were the production company of the UK version. I'm not sure if they are now, but, you know, there was that. And, you know, again, Leslie Jones, a very big personality. It's just she is totally over the top. And I think that's what you want with most game shows. You want it to be fun. You want it to be just over the top. And at first I was a bit off put by it. But after rewatching the first two episodes, because I'm airing this before the third episode of the reboot airs, or I'm recording this, sorry, uh, before the third episode of the reboot airs it's just it's very big it's not something that i'm necessarily all that used to so it was just kind of like whoa she's right there she's right in your living room and i took you know i rewatched the first two episodes probably four or five times and it it does take a little bit of getting used to for me because i'm just not used to that you know, her personality is huge. You know, of course, she spent about five seasons on uh, Saturday, Night, Saturday Night Live. She was also in the Ghostbusters reboot a few years back. And I think, you know, she said that she was a huge fan of the show and tried to get on the show, but just couldn't get past the auditions back in the day when Dave Ruprecht had it. It's cool to see her as host. Like She's got a very big, very colorful personality. And the fact is that the prizes are bigger They've still got the the inflatable bonuses, which is cool, because I'm pretty sure that every version of the show had that. And I think that she's doing the best job that she can. It's just like this... It's it's cool to see it. I will say, though, that I would have wanted to see an actual announcer on the show. There is an announcer on the show right at the beginning, once you get into... The, the the episode that introduces Leslie Jones as she comes into the studio floor and welcomes everybody. But other than that, it's Leslie Jones that carries the show. She's the announcer for the big sweep. She hosts the show. I know that she's got sort of an actor or sidekick, uh, Neil, who's like a security guard, uh, of course, because you're in a grocery store. And I read that uh, this version of Supermarket Sweep hosted by Leslie Jones is taped out at the, I think it's the Santa Monica Airport. So, I mean, it's huge, right? Just, it looks large. And I mean, just on a large, large scale. And they just, the most recent episode that I saw was a Halloween episode. By the time you guys hear this, I think it'll be November 6th, whatever the Friday is. And so they, you know, it was a Halloween episode. And then again, like I said, they've like with a lot of these reboots, they stitch two half hour programs together to to fit the one hour. So you've got the, the Halloween episode and then just a normal run of the mill, regular general episode after that. It just kind of, I don't know, for that, it just kind of threw things off a bit for me. But I do really enjoy like the supermarket sweep sweatshirts. So if anybody in the U.S., ABC, if you want to send a Supermarket Sweep sweatshirt to your boy Lee Dickey down here in Canada, I'd be all for it. Or, well, up here in Canada. Sorry, because you guys are... I Like, I'm not looking at a, at a map, and geographically, I'm a total mess right now. So, if ABC or anybody involved with Supermarket Sweep would like to send a sweatshirt or any of my friends or family that down in the States that are listening to this, if you want to send a sweatshirt, a Supermarket Sweep sweatshirt, to your boy, please do so. I will be so, so grateful. But, you know, $100,000, again, like I said, the jackpots have gone up. And to have, like, two episodes sort of edited together to fit, like, this cohesive one-hour time slot... It's a lot like the other reboots, but I'm just, you know, I'm more into the, like, because I have a television background, you fade to black on the one hour or on the first half an hour, you have a small break, a commercial break, and then you come up on that second half an hour. But 
you know, Fremantle Media has got this formula down because I think that like all the classic game show reboots are uh, produced and owned by Fremantle Media. So, I mean, they have that formula. That's how they like to do things. I'm not knocking it, but it's just as somebody that has a television background and, you know, if you're doing two or more episodes, if you're filming in bulk, like you fade to black on that half an hour or the hour and then you come up again when you're ready to go for the next half an hour, right? Again, that's not how they do it. Maybe the television landscape has changed. Well, obviously the television landscape has changed since I got <laughs> got in uh, a little while ago. So, you know, I, I can't knock Fremantle Media for doing what they do and producing it how they produce it. I will say that I, you know, not that I have a problem with the theme song, which is a snippet of Salt and Pepper's uh, Push It. Love Salt and Pepper, love the song. But I was expecting something a little more supermarket sweep ish that sounded a little more instrumental and a little more, say, uh, brass like, because when I know David Ruprecht had it, it sounded not or- orchestral, but it sounded very upbeat. And it sounded a lot more, there was a a lot of brass elements and keyboards involved. Again, not knocking that small snippet of Push It by Salt and Pepper, but I'm just like, where's this Supermarket Sweep theme song? I love Supermarket Sweep, whether it was the Canadian version or what I've seen of the UK and uh, US versions hosted by David Ruprecht previously. I'm just, I was expecting something that sounded a little more supermarket-ish, right? You know? And that's that's just me. I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying the show from what I've seen of it. I know that uh, Fremantle Media has this formula. You, you're editing two half-an-hour programs to fit the one hour. Uh, I love the, the bold, bright colors. The game shows are basically just over the top, all about fun. And, of course, there's the giant jackpot at the end. And... Supermarket Sweep delivers that. Leslie Jones is awesome as host. She's got a giant, over-the-top, big personality. And you can't really ask for anything more than that. Like, she's amazing as the announcer calling the uh, the big sweep at the end of the episode. And, of course, like, with the giant, lo- with the big, loud suits and, like, the graphic tees and running shoes. I mean, she's just basically brought supermarket sweep into the 21st century into 2020 and to be fair like it's probably my favorite game show reboot that's been on the air within like the last say five years you know and of course there's mash game there's the one hundred thousand dollar pyramid card sharks pressure luck uh if i'm missing anything else let me know i know weakest link even though that's not a Fremantle property was recently rebooted with Jane Lynch as host but Supermarket Sweep with Leslie Jones as host it airs on ABC in the States and CTV here in Canada awesome it's just colorful it's big it's over the top and it delivers what it promises you're running through the aisles of a supermarket putting as much as you can in your cart and you're hoping for the best so that was honestly really really cool of uh, ABC to pick it up. I know that Netflix was in the running for the show, but it's on network TV, it's on ABC, and it's on CTV here in Canada. If you want to check it out, of course, you can check your local listings. They're not paying me for any of this. I'm just telling you that I am a giant fan of the ABC reboot of Supermarket Sweep. And if Canada ever wants to reboot the Canadian version of Supermarket Sweep, Hey, I got a television background, I've got a radio background, I've spent most of my life in media, my name is Lee Dickey, and I am officially throwing my hat, or my name, in the hat to host the show. So please, somebody, if you're planning on rebooting Supermarket Sweep Canada, I'm the guy. And if anybody wants to send me a Supermarket Sweep sweatshirt, please, I'd be all for it. Okay, whether it's a you know friends or family in the States, hey... Hit me up, and uh, we'll work something out. I'd be all for it. Please and thank you. But those are my impressions and first impressions of the Supermarket Sweep reboot currently airing on ABC in the States, CTV here in Canada. 
hosted by Leslie Jones. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Please do comment, like, share, and subscribe. Find us on your favorite podcast app and player of choice. Again, my name is Lee Dickey. We are on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and wherever podcasts are available. Please do rate us five stars and leave us reviews too. If you would, find us on YouTube as well under Lee Dickey TV. Follow along on social media at Lee T. Dickey. Send your emails, comments, questions, and anything else to Lee T. Dickey at gmail.com. Of course, everything, all the links will be down in the description below. Again, I have been your host, Lee Dickey, and this wraps up another episode of the Beats and Speaks podcast. We will see you all and talk to you all next Friday for a brand new episode of the Beats and Speaks podcast. All right, have a good weekend, and we'll talk to you soon. Peace. LeeTDickey.com